federal judge allowing the deposition of an FBI agent accused of working with Facebook's parent company, Meta, to bury the Hunter Biden laptop story ahead of the 2020 election. The judge saying Elvis Chan played a critical role for the FBI in coordinating with social media platforms related to censorship. Even if Chan played no role in the Hunter Biden laptop communication issue, he may have knowledge of who did, and his deposition is nonetheless warranted. Beverly Hallberg, president of District Media Group and fellow at the Independent Women's Forum, joins us now. In layman's terms, this FBI agent now can be forced to testify under oath at a deposition where, if he lies, he could end up going to jail. Is this the biggest step in uncovering what could be a huge cover-up so far? Yeah, I think this is a huge step forward because it means we are getting closer to finding out how much the FBI may have pressured big tech to censor information on their platforms. And as you just mentioned there, we don't know directly if Elvis Chan was involved with these communications, but he is based in Silicon Valley. He's in charge of cybersecurity uh, issues there. And even if he doesn't know, or even if he didn't do this himself, he probably will be able to point us who did. And I think this also points to this federal judge in Louisiana is doing more for us to get to the bottom of what actually happened than the GOP could ever do through hearings. So I think this is a huge development, and I think we'll know a whole lot more pretty soon. Yeah, there's also that intercept report. We we're talking about it earlier on in the show, um, and it's it was it talked about how the DHS said that they shut down their disinformation board. I remember the one that was run for just a brief moment by Nina Jankowitz, uh, but they still kept that line of communication open with social media companies. So this sort of censorship. Appears Appears to still be going on. It really does. And I think a lot of people point to this even in the current election cycle, even with midterms, and wonder whether or not social media companies were doing different things to censor information. And I think on the surface, people understand that social media companies are going to do what they're going to do. But when the FBI gets involved, when the government gets involved and is forcing these companies to censor certain information, the American people rightly look at that and think that it's wrong. So I think even beyond what this means for the Hunter Biden laptop, I think this comes down to what is this meant for other issues as well. I'm hoping that if there has been a lot more coordination between the FBI and big tech, that this will open the floodgates for us to find that out. Meantime, the New York Times publishing an op-ed titled <laughs> I love this. An Ode to Stacey Abrams. It begins with this. As the Bible tells the story, you should just stop right there, but we must go on. Moses delivers his people from bondage and to the promised land, but even with all his efforts, he is not allowed to enter. He must gain upon it from a distance. This, I fear, is the story of <laughs> Stacey Abrams. I had a lot of jokes that I wrote, but I'm going to keep it simple. Your reaction to that comparison, Beverly? It makes you shed a little bit of a tear, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. um, look, uh, on this story, I think it's quite remarkable that a twice-failed gubernatorial candidate is seen as a savior for the Democrat Party, especially when her allies, allies on the ground, said that she was a terrible candidate, somebody who focused more on the national spotlight, than actually going door-to-door -door and talking to Georgians. And I put her really in the same camp as Beta O'Rourke, somebody who loves the spotlight, somebody who has a lot of name recognition, but somebody who always loses. So I think for for many Republicans, they say, go ahead and put Stacey Abrams on this pedestal. We'd love her to run again. Yeah, so real quick, because we've got to let you run. Do you think that this is it for her, or do you think that she's going to run again? I just, just don't know. I mean, there was one, <laughs> uh, one, I think it was The Atlantic, that called her a superstar loser. <laughs> No, I think this is not the last we'll hear from Stacey Abrams. I'm not sure if it's going to be somebody who's going to run for office, but she's somebody who's going to be in the national spotlight. We're going to see her on the speaking tour and probably on some other cable networks talking about some Democrat issues. He called her Moses. I still can't get over that. Beverly Hallberg, <laughs> thank you very much. We appreciate thank it. Thank you.